Here we go everyone, welcome to the Boosted Fam. And that's right, we finally got some Jeep parts in here. So you still see all the Christmas boxes because I've been a little lazy. The dog's wondering what it is. Uh oh. Oh man, I guess I'll go ahead and jump to all of it wide open so we can see what it is. And well, here's the real awkward part. My wife actually still has a Jeep in Canada, so I can't do anything with it just yet, but I'm too excited, gotta open it. Been waiting on this for a full month. Oh no, five weeks to get here. Whenever I bought, they didn't originally tell me, hey, by the way, we build it to order. So, yeah, it takes them three to four weeks to build it. Then, you know, almost a week to ship it. You got it, Scrappy? You good? You all right, buddy? Yeah, I'll let you see here in a second, buddy. Uh-oh, that one's coming in now. Well, here we go. It is all unpacked. So, I went with Motobuilt, as you can tell. That being a huge, massive reason why I bought from this company. Being a veteran, I absolutely love anything built in America. Uh, keys not included, sorry. But license plate bracket with the camera holder for the spare tire, all the way down to the spare tire mount. This is supposed to hold up to a 40 inch tire with no issues. That's another reason why I wanted this company. Most of them said 37s. Yeah, Scrappy wants to be in here. Most of them hold 37s, this one guaranteed a 40, and well, we're running a 40. So here we go, we are finally being safe and cautious with the actual tire mount. That is not our stock one with just a spacer on it. Oops, excuse me, excuse me, Scrappy. Excuse me, buddy, yeah. Ugh. And here we go, just a stubby. Yeah, obviously none of it is painted, but then I've got a question for y'all here in a second after going over this, but loved how this one held the stock fog lights because my wife said she had to have the fog lights in the stubby and the dogs are just taking over guys. They're, they're just taking over. Yeah. So, when ready, fog lights, you got the equivalents of your D hooks or D rings. So there we go. Everything we need to actually make this trail ready and capable and get rid of the JK bumper <laughs> and the stock tire mount, which were the two things that were bugging me. Love that my buddy let me borrow the JK bumper but obviously we need to do something. Now here is the next question, guys. This is a very important question. Very, very, very important, all right? So do I go ahead and paint all this to match the Jeep? Or I haven't told any of you guys this yet, or I don't think I have, but we're going to go with the Bikini Pearl car with something like a Battleship Gray for accents because the 1972, here we go. I gotta give it away. 1972, we're gonna be painting probably something around a Battleship Gray and then doing all the accents, lift kit, all that stuff with the Bikini Pearl color because it is going to end up being my daughter's truck. She loves the color of the Jeep, but for the next 10 years, or sorry, nine years, until my daughter's driving the truck, I don't want to drive around a bikini colored truck. It's just not what I want to do. And I want to pick a little bit different than the gray that everyone else is using. I know it's a popular color, but before that gray came popular, we had already made this decision, and well, we're sticking to it. We really like that color combo. So what do you guys think? And I'll, well, then we're gonna jump into some actual maintenance on some vehicles uh, that are here in town. Scrappy man, buddy, you just want all the spotlight, don't you? But anyways, what do you all think? Do we do the gray accents and go ahead and start with that on the Jeep? Or do we want to match the Jeep for now? Either way, it'll be fully custom, no other Jeep like it, which will be awesome. That's what we're going for. We want a different build than everyone else. But now it is time to jump to the F100 in the garage. We gotta get some work done on that. And in this video, I am told on New Year's Day, this is obviously coming out after New Year's, the 72 power choke will be up and running. Yes, finally! But anyways, let's jump to the shop. Here we go, guys. Just like uh, any other build, well, we come up with issues. I know I said the 1972 power choke should be started in this video, but well, it is now Sunday and the guy that was supposed to get up and running this week, he has come down with the flu. The flu is very popular here in Northeast Tennessee right now. So yes, we have failed on that. But I guess that means, uh, well, as you can see, uh, I was living the bachelor life and not cleaning while my family was out of town. But we're gonna go ahead and throw the bumper on and the 40 inch, supposedly 40 inch tire carrier. So the here's the bad part, guys where any of this work is done so well. Actually, my buddy that usually helps me is his anniversary weekend. So we get to unmount and then remount a 40 inch tire solo. So we'll see how that goes. But I will prove to Julian in this video, it doesn't take multiple people. He thinks I always get someone to help me, but I never do. So since everything fell through, we're gonna go ahead and knock this out. But if you've noticed, a lot of people keep asking, is this a JK bumper? 
Yes, this is a JK bumper. It's off of a stock Sahara. We literally just took a saw saw at one point in time when it was on my buddy's Jeep. Too, because he said he didn't want a long bumper anymore, he wanted a nubby, so took a saw to it. But a lot of people think you can't interchange a JL and a JK bumper. Right here is proof that you can. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cover plate real quick because it'll help it to where I can get to all these bolts easier. Now I'll just show you the simple little thing that you have to do to just be able to simply be able to interchange a JK and a JL, JL bumper. I'll go ahead and show you real quick. Since this bumper is cut off, it's really easy to show you, but simply just to make this bumper be able to fit on here. I simply had to loosen this one bolt, which is it an 18 along with the rest? Nope, I believe that is actually a 16. But the 16 millimeter bolt just right here, just loosen it up and you can simply adjust where your hooks are gonna go and then everything just fits on extremely smooth and simple. There's one side, come on, there it is. See, that nice and simple. And then obviously with how Jeep has been awesome and just has one plug for the fog lights, all we gotta do now, take out four simple little bolts on both of them, throw them in this bumper, and then just throw it right back on. All right guys, if you buy a moto built bumper, I'll go ahead and tell you, you run into a little tiny issue, nothing major. Anybody that's doing you know, this type of work will most likely have these schools. If not, you can go ahead and buy them before you do it now. So here's your stock screws to put it into your stock bumper, right? Well. These are the nice little bolts that Motobuilt gives you to make it look nicer, cleaner, and everything. It's a different thread pattern. Only one problem. Fits into the top hole, but not the bottom hole. So just quick, easy fix. Just drill it out a little bit, and it'll be good to go. But just thought I'd let you all know, if you buy one of these bumpers, you will have to drill out your fog lights just a little bit. Man, now that I'm really looking at this bumper, I am no professional welder by any means, but it looks like they did a pretty dang good job on the welds on this thing. Personal opinion, I think it looks pretty solid. But there we go, we have the stock fog lights back into the aftermarket bumper. Granted, the stock fog lights on these JLs are way on the outside, so we have a whole bunch of extra wiring. I will fix all of this stuff while this bumper is off to powder coat. So I can wait a little bit on that right now. This is just a little bit of a temporary fix so we can get the bumper on there, then we can move over to the tire carrier. All right, here we go. I'm not sure how far off I am right now. Feels like one that side's going in. Look up this side. All right, so see, here's your issue. Being that I realigned those bolt holes. Oh, nope, there it is. Other than knowing that my six month old was asleep until that just probably happened. Here in a second here, I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. You don't need to watch me finish tightening that up, but there is a little bit of an issue over here on this side. I was able to make this work for right now. See, you can tell that it's all connected, but if we climb up underneath the Jeep, now the bumper's actually going good enough for the work to slide around. You can see how tight the wiring is through there. So I'll have to do something about that, but it's not even this wire. I can loosen this wire even more. It's just this one's a little bit tighter than what I like, being that it's going straight to the actual fog light. But it is able to work this current second, but we're definitely going to need to find something that's a little bit better than that than stretching those wires. There we go, everything is working as it should, but wait, let me turn this off real quick. We have to do the famous thing that every man does. Go ahead and turn this off. You have to finish off every job with the famous. Yep, that ain't going anywhere. All right, now we're heading to the back to the tire carrier. Just for good old Julie to show that it doesn't take two people to at least take it off. Well, that was the simple part. Uh, stay for the end when I have to put this thing back on. That'll be the fun part. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like we've made it very far, but there is one thing I've got to show you guys for whenever you're trying to do this. So here's your stock tire carrier. You see where all this stuff comes through right here. And this is the tricky part because I, for the life of me, I can figure out how to actually get the camera out because it's one solid piece. But what it is, is these two little holes right here. After you've already uh, taken the two little bolts out of there you actually have to take a screwdriver or something with a rubber mallet and just give it a little tap to where it actually 
dislodges it from the actual tire carrier because there are no real videos on how in the world to get this out. So there you go. There's a quick, simple 15, 20 second demonstration on how to actually get the camera out of it. Well, there you go. There's where we stand now. You have the whole wiring harness out of the tailgate and everything done. Tailgate is now sitting over there, right about there to where we can start adding on all of these other extra parts. I'm not gonna lie, I had to look up someone else's video, which I'll put a link down below in the description of his videos because he did a really good job of it. And I just haven't taken the time to make a how-to video and his is really good other than his foreign accent. So the English is kind of broken up and not the clearest, but it still is obviously helping me get the job done. Here you guys go, here's the painstaking part. Looks all nice and pretty. Yeah. Uh, that hurts. That hurts knowing that it looks so nice and good. Then there we go, just busting through to get to the bolts to be able to put on the heavy duty Mac brackets, my bad. Oh, there we go, that part is done for. Still gotta put the camera on and, and everything, but first we've gotta see if uh, my good old dad bod muscles can go ahead and get that 40 up all the way to there now. Here we go, guys. Here's your cheating method to where when your buddy Julian decides he doesn't want to come over and help. Just because this is anniversary. Really, dude? Jeez Louise. Obviously, guys, totally kidding. But uh, my wife and I, for our anniversaries, really don't do a whole lot. We're kind of homebodies, so. But they actually went on a trip, so I don't think I can blame them right now. Truly don't. But we'll go ahead and say this isn't safe at all, so please don't try this. <laughs> I can't say I've successfully done it three or four times now, but. So there you go, Julian. Well, there we go. It is finally fully on. We have the tire on and I didn't show it in the video because I would have felt really dumb doing it, but I'll still give it away. If you all can tell, I totally forgot to put this little license plate holder through the tire earlier. So I actually had to mount the tire twice, but then you've got your camera right there. So I have no need to move the license plate yet because then I'll have to put a light up here, which the light and everything is over there, but I'm running out of time today. There's family time that needs to be spent. Oh man, what happened there? No. But anyways, so you see the tire carrier and we've got it all pieced back together up there. And finally, it does have a little drip to it though, guys. I'm not gonna lie. And then finally the front bumper that we started with. So yes, it all does need powder coated. Really sorry for no uploads for the past couple weeks, but holidays, family time, trumps YouTube every day of the week. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Stop and by for the first time. Please subscribe. You all have a great day.